All right. Hey, good evening, folks. Once again, we are back taking a look at the tropics. Tonight is Tuesday, September 23rd, 2025. This is your evening tropical update, the first in quite a while, probably a month or more. We have had an unbelievably quiet 2025 Atlantic hurricane season to date, other than Major Hurricane Aaron and now Major Hurricane Gabrielle on your screen to the north there. Um, we have not had hardly any activity to talk about this year, so the videos have been pretty sporadic. You guys probably know by now these come around when they need to come around, and when they're not, well, they're not. So we do have two areas of interest though tonight and I want to get ahead of this because I am going out of town this weekend so I'm not going to have all my recording stuff with me it's kind of a big deal so I definitely am not going to be able to bring my computer with me and uh, I'm going to have to just do regular updates on the Facebook page so I want to get at least a video out on some thoughts on what we're looking at going down the line here so set the stage for you real quick this evening we have Hurricane Gabrielle category three or four still if I'm not mistaken uh, moved well east of Bermuda it is moving out to the east and it will probably eventually make it over to Portugal Spain maybe the Azores Islands, where a hurricane watch is in effect. So uh, good luck with all that stuff over there. But uh, we care about the United States on this video, so that's what we're going to be primarily interested in, which brings us to Invest 94 and 93L. So let's kind of let's circle them real quick for you. This is 94L on, um, on this run right here. And then this cluster of storms is 93L. So, you know... Um, there's, there's two different areas of interest that both look like they're going to try to develop. 94L looks like it's going to move over towards the Bahamas and develop, and then 93L looks like it's going to kind of follow along, but maybe stay somewhat parallel with 94L. So remember, 94 is a closer one, 93 is a little further away. So real quick, look at the Hurricane Center's map tonight. Again, Gabrielle, no big deal. 125 mile an hour winds, but it's moving away. That's the cone if you're interested. It's not really too much for us to worry about, obviously. So 94L has a low chance to develop in the next 48 hours, only 30%, and then through seven days, a much higher percent, about 70% chance to develop. Notice how its X actually has a line drawn all the way over to the Bahamas. It means I don't think it's going to develop over Puerto Rico or Hispaniola, just going to be a heavy rain threat there, and then develop over towards the Bahamas. Then we have uh, Invest 93L up to a 70% chance within the next 48 hours. So this one much more likely to develop in the short term, so within the next day or two, and then... Uh, much more likely also through seven days at 90%. So 93L is almost certainly going to become a storm before 94L does. So let's take a look at the broad scale water vapor pattern. The big thing to note here is that a mid-level ridge is building in in the wake of Gabrielle. You see this dark spot right here. This is an extension of the Atlantic High where you have a clockwise rotation. So what's going to happen is this clockwise rotation is going to kind of shove both of our systems off more to the west-northwest before they begin to round that corner back into the uh, the more the jet stream coming in from the other way here. So the pathway towards the U.S. is a lot closer than it was with Aaron or what it was with Gabrielle as both these systems look like they'll get pushed closer before they try to recurve. So this is why this is a little bit more of a threat than some of these other systems have been to date. Now, uh, staying on tropical tidbits, going into the satellite presentation of these storms this evening, this is 93L, the one further out and more likely to develop first. We have a healthier cluster of thunderstorms and less wind shear and being imparted on our system. We have somewhat limited high clouds, and it looks like 94L is actually taking the brunt of the shear, which is giving 93L a little bit more hospitality to develop. It looks like maybe there's some dry air infringing on the storm, but it's got a healthy little cluster and a little bit of low-level rotation, and it looks like this probably within the next day or so is going going to try to become a checkmark organized at least tropical depression or tropical storm. Now, 94L is a little bit of a different story. One of the big features we're talking about tonight, if you look north of Hispaniola, is this upper level low. You can see it very clearly here on the satellite. And what this low is doing is it's imparting a westerly wind shear on Invest 94L. So the center of this system somewhere in here, but most of the wind shear is keeping all the thunderstorms well off to the east, very displaced and disorganized. So 94L is actually kind of suffering, but it's taking the brunt of the wind shear for its friend over here off your screen. So while they both move in this general direction, um, 94L is sort of, um, you know, taking the brunt of the wind shear for it. So that's why 93L develops first, 94L develops later. This upper level low is retrograding back to the west, and it should kind of move over the Bahamas and eventually Florida and kind of dissipate out. And that's what should give 94L a little bit more breathing room. That's why it has a lower chance through 48 hours, but then still has a higher chance in the next seven days. Water temperatures are quite warm, and once that gets out of the picture, wind shear looks like it's going to pick up and improve. Okay, so what's the rub here? We, we got one or two systems. What, what do I need to know? What are they doing? Who's, who's, who's under the gun here? 
it's interesting, right? So <laughs> what we actually have is two systems that could be close enough in theory to actually impact each other, or maybe they won't. That's the problem. The European model kind of illustrates this pretty well. This is valid for zero Z Saturday. This is Friday night on a regular local time in Florida. And we have our Invest 93L already developed into a tropical storm, 997, nice little tropical storm, nice little small, healthy little tropical storm. We have Invest 94L, which on this model is still kind of a tropical depression, maybe still kind of trying to organize late Friday. It very well may not be a really named storm yet. It may just be like an area of interest, maybe a PTC. They got to put watches out. Could be a couple different things at this point. On this model, these systems are pretty far apart. And given that neither one of them would be particularly strong at this point, I would imagine they would be far enough apart to not directly impact each other. So uh, remember, these low pressures are kind of like magnets. You get them too close together and they start doing stuff. But th there's a certain distance where as long as you keep the magnets far enough away from each other, they don't really notice each other are there. But you get them too close and they start attracting and repelling each other and then you get all cra kinds of crazy stuff happening. This is often referred to as the Fujiwahara effect. When we get two low pressures too close together, they start kind of pinwheeling around each other or one will try to like eat the other one. Uh, some kind of weird stuff starts happening when you get these lows too close together. On the European solution going into early next week, these storms stay far enough apart. Um, 93L develops pretty rapidly. 94L kind of takes its time. But as we work through the end of the weekend, we have two storms. Now, what winds up happening on the Euro is we get two pretty well-developed storms, but 93L or what would be Humberto, I guess, and then this would be H, whatever the I storm is, would be over here. And it looks like this would eventually clear enough of a path to where the, the 94L would eventually be able to follow it back out to sea. That's just one of the Euro runs. That's like the latest Euro run. But the important thing here is they don't ever really fully interact with each other. They stay as two separate storms. They stay just far enough apart to not have any direct impacts with, unless you count this one pulling this one away eventually. Um, the other solution is the GFS solution, which sees these closer together. This is the same time we started on, 0Z on Saturday, but notice how much closer they are already. There's a lot less distance between them. And as we go into Saturday and Sunday and early next week, the GFS sees these storms a lot closer together. And what happens is it takes 94L and just simply wraps it up into 93L, and then they just kind of pinwheel around, and then they both just disappear. Pretty different from what the Euro has, like quite different, actually. So... The problem is it's really too early to know which model's right. Um, both solutions are plausible because both models have a different idea of where these things will be in time and space. So I can't really say, ah, oh, well, I think the Euro's right because it makes sense for what it's showing me, but then the GFS is like, well, if that happens, then the GFS is right. Um, it's going to probably depend on, again, two things, where exactly each storm forms, and then how strong they are, because weaker storms are going to be less likely to interact with each other. The stronger they get, the more likely they are to interact with each other. Um, European ensembles here over on uh, Weather Nerds, and this is probably the only model so far that really has handled the situation well in terms of there's clearly a suite of tracks for 94L, and there's clearly a suite of tracks for 93L. But what you'll notice is that while there are a suite of tracks, there is this weird Venn diagram in like the spooky zone where the model sees them getting too close to each other. And then you see that kind of interaction going on. So what does this really come down to and boil down to and mean for like the Carolinas? If I'm in like North Carolina or I'm in Virginia or in South Carolina, like what, what, what the hell do I really need to know here? The reality is that there could be a world where 94L gets in the Bahamas, finds a nice little pocket of lower wind shear and warmer water, and if 93L stays far enough away, could find a little bit of room to breathe and could blow up over that warm water. It is late September. We don't discount anything this time of year getting this close to the U.S. in terms of impacts, and the steering flow could bring this up into the Carolinas if enough of it doesn't shift to pull it away. Um, we do know that going into the weekend, there is going to be a cold front moving towards the eastern U.S. This is uh, Thursday evening, Friday, late, you know, Thursday night, showing that cold front draped across the southeast states, across Tennessee Valley, maybe up into the mid-Atlantic region. Um, you can kind of see that front makes it to the coast on Friday and Saturday, and then another low comes up, and then you can see the WPC is drawing 94L going into early next week. Now, this front kind of stalls out. It doesn't have a ton of cold air punch behind it, and then the reinforcing front isn't really all that strong. So you're going to also have some mesoscale boundaries or some synoptic boundaries working in with this. 
I think that it, right now at this point, if I'm in the Carolinas, I'm at least expecting a pretty wet weekend and probably start to next week. It could be potentially heavy rainfall event for the Carolinas. Um, but what I do believe is that so far, we don't have much indication that this is a threat to Florida. Um, I think that it would stay far enough offshore of Florida, given the cold front coming in and kind of setting a boundary for Florida. This would probably keep the storm turning more northward. The question is, once it's in this pocket, does it get influenced on 93L and get pulled away? Or does the, do they stay separate with enough high pressure between them to force 94L to stay moving northward? And then we're talking North Carolina, South Carolina, maybe even Virginia, Delmarva, um, Maryland, you know, Chesapeake Bay kind of region. There, there's all that potential on the table if it were to. I don't believe it's going to be horrifically strong, at least right now, but it's very, very early in the process. I really don't want to say something and then get told on Tuesday, hey, look, it's strong now. What did you say on, on last two, you know, a week ago? Like, hey, man, it's a week ago. So this is like a week out. We're talking at least five to seven days before any kind of serious impacts. So if you're in the Carolinas, Virginia, that kind of region, just keep an eye on things. Just, just, you know, keep an eye on things. It's going to be something we're going to have to watch. Uh, at least expect some rainfall. And just know that you guys could have a tropical depression storm trying to organize south of you. And given a complex interaction, it may be an issue this week or this early next week. It may not be an issue at all, which you're going to have to watch and see. Uh, those are the only two threats right now. Um, everything else is pretty quiet. There's really nothing else coming up on the ensembles. Uh, no CAGs uh, down here in the Caribbean. That keeps kind of like lighting up and then disappearing. So we're going to watch this complex interaction. I will probably have at least one more video tomorrow, especially if we have anything new. If we don't, then I probably won't. And uh, But the page will have daily updates through the weekend and the next week. I'm not going to forget about y'all. I just may not be quite as available as I normally am. But we'll have updates. We'll have the latest and we're going to track this all the way through whatever happens. So that's what I got for you guys tonight on your topical update. As always, thanks for watching and have a good one.